My parents once told me I could make any life I wanted. I believed them once. My name is Alan Corman. I am a 35 year old accountant. This is the life I made. Every morning I drive 10 minutes into the city to work. My car is a 2003 Volvo wagon. I suffer through the monotony of NPR so I can have conversational material to kiss my boss's ass with. This is the complex which daily confines me, Jameson and Levitt at 1200 Main Street. I climb these stairs every morning in hopes that before I reach the doorway, an architectural flaw will cause the building to fall in on itself. Each morning, I am disappointed. Meet my coworkers. You caught them doing what they do best, comparing gold play to fountain pens. See the tall one? That's Richard Goldman. He's addicted to speed. In my line of work, that's a performance enhancing drug. He was recently promoted for churning out the annual Anderson Report in 2 hours and 17 minutes. He has the nicest gold-plated fountain pen in the entire office. Each day at 12.30 for the past three years, my partner Henry retires to the restroom to masturbate. He's very sloppy about hiding the playboy he has rolled up in the newspaper. The rest of the office is too busy tending to their egos to notice. I would hate my job a lot more if I had any desire to return home to my wife. I don't, of course. Most days I postpone the inevitable to join my friend Tony outside the city for a couple joints and a six pack. Tony's the janitor at my building. He's the one who cleans up after Henry finishes punching the munchkin. Anyhow, Tony also happens to be the biggest dealer in the greater Boston area. Mostly just weed, no hard shit. He hides it well too, and only drives his Jaguar on the weekends. This is the one agreeable half hour of my day. Sadly, I return home to Sheila, the cold and stiff woman I call my wife. I used to tell her my eyes were bloodshot because of my contacts, but no amount of eye drops can explain emptying three bags of cheesy fries. Once she confronted me, asked me what my mother would say if she knew I was buying drugs. I said that she'd tell me to pick up some Xanax for that strung out wife of mine to save her the trip. Sheila hasn't brought it up since. She doesn't love me anymore. Don't feel bad. I don't love her either. No, no, we have plenty of sex. Only, she does it more for a workout than anything else. She read somewhere that she can burn 100 calories having sex. I don't think I can burn nearly as many. I would divorce her if it weren't for our two girls. You can't see them here. They're at boarding school in Vermont so Sheila can drink Cosmos with her girlfriends all day. They usually sit here, eating the grilled cheese I make. It's about the only thing I can make, and it sucks. But they love it, and I love them for it. They are the only reason I am here. They deserve a normal family, or at least the appearance of one. My parents once told me I could make any life I wanted. I believed them once. But now? Well, now I'm only biding my time.